This machine is my Wazer. And a Wazer is a personal water jet that is designed to cut a lot of different and hard to cut materials. It's designed to cut flat materials only. And I bought it to be able to cut thin sections of metal, um, fiberglass, carbon fiber, actually stone, anything like that, um, it should be able to cut. Now the problem with it comes from the fact that the way these machines work is they use a very high pressure jet of water which they entrain within it a fine aggregate and it's really really fine uh, the, the consistency of fine sand and this material is crushed garnet it's very hard and it's accelerated to a very high velocity and then it just basically smashes into whatever material you're trying to cut and if you smash enough of these little particles into your material it'll eventually bust right through it. Um, the particles are small enough so that the hole that it makes is no wider than the width of the jet itself which is only a, a little less than 20 thousandths of an inch. So it's able to make very very tight very precise cuts in very hard and otherwise difficult to cut material. The problem is that the way that the aggregate is entrained within the water jet is through a vacuum system and that vacuum system has a tendency to get clogged up and when that happens you lose the flow of aggregate and the machine stops cutting. I'll show you a little bit about the major elements of this thing. It's loaded with information by a G-code file which you put on an SD card and the SD card loads in the side of this little SD card reader right here which is then available for the machine to read um, and these are the controls uh, it just has a computer inside that handles most of the, the details this is a gantry type um, coordinate system that is able to cut within a field that's 18 inches wide by 13 inches deep and this is the the injector and this little tube right here is the tube that contains the aggregate and the aggregate is pulled via vacuum from this cabinet which is kept full of this aggregate and it has to be kept completely full and I think that has to do with the rate at which the aggregate exits from the bottom is related to the amount of aggregate that's piled on top of it. So basically what you do is you fill these two compartments full of this aggregate which you buy in bags or barrels it's not terribly expensive but you do use quite a bit of it and you close this again and when you fire the machine up it will induct the aggregate from a piping system that's underneath it through this vacuum hose injects it into the stream of water which is right there and then drives it down into the the target which is sitting here on this bed. Now the bed is underlain by a tank of water that's about that deep and it's full of water as you can see here and the reason for that is that this water jet as it comes through has to dissipate its energy and it does that in that in the tank of water that lies underneath. Uh, the process of union is fairly straightforward if you can keep the aggregate flow uninterrupted. And unfortunately it's tricky. It's trickier than my other machines 
which makes it harder to learn to use and harder to consistently use. We're going to try and go ahead and cut this file that we made for the flap reinforcement and we're going to cut that out of G10. I'm going to go ahead with that as soon as I get the machine fired up. Okay, <clears throat> I've gone ahead and set this piece of one millimeter G10 in here in the approximate correct location and what I'm going to do now is go ahead and start the process wherein the first thing the machine will do is bring out is bring the cutter out and set it on the top left corner of the frame that surrounds the piece we're going to cut out and we're just going to make sure that's in the right location and now I'm going to go ahead and select the cut file which I saved earlier as Wazer Job 9 and it asked me am I preparing to cut this and I say yes so it wants me to lift the nozzle clear of the cut bed obstructions which it is and now it's going to go ahead and find the upper left edge it tells me that this material is acrylic which it's really not but it's that was the only one in the library that that I thought was close enough to this material of one millimeter thick it's got seven minutes of cut time so it wants me to make sure the abrasive hopper is filled so I better do that I'll just fill these until a little bit of abrasive mounds up on top and that way I know that they're full Okay, press OK. Confirm the water supply is on. My water supply is. But there it is, and it's on. Wants me to make sure I've fastened the material? I have. Set the nozzle height. And for that, we use this little device right here, which they give you. This little tab is the standard nozzle height. And I'm going to loosen the nozzle. Okay, we have the nozzle set correctly. You have to be kind of careful because there's a tank of water in there that you have to go fish in if you drop something. That's okay. Close the door. And the next step says press cut to start. I do know that it's hard to see this, but we'll do our best and see how it works out. Okay, it claims the job is done. So, open her up and have a look. I'll remove my little hold downs, which... Okay, we do notice that there's aggregate up here, and that's a good sign, not a bad sign. 
So here's our part. And you notice it's got little tabs on it. And that, of course, is by intent. I left these little tabs in here just because I didn't want these little pieces of plastic to be getting into the tank because they're a problem to get out of the tank if you let them in there. One of the things I notice right now is it appear to have some delamination of this fiberglass. And that apparently is caused by the water jet. You know, maybe it's the effect of the water getting in between the laminations. No, I don't really know. I'll wash this thing off. Alright, so here's the finished piece. And of course the piece is good to, uh, uh, from a dimensional standpoint, although it does appear to have delaminated a little bit. Although it, it's distressing that, that this happens. Uh, it wouldn't happen in a solid material, but it, it does happen on, uh, in this case, that's for sure. And I don't know whether to blame the water jet or blame the material itself. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to blame it on the material. Well, it's been about 24 hours since I cut this, and I have had an opportunity to do a little bit of research on this material and what's likely to be going on here. Uh, the first thing that we did discover is that the manufacturer does say that this material uh, is not recommended for uh, cutting operations with a water jet and the reason for that is because as the water jet punches its way down through the material um, the water pressure right at the point where it's impacting the material is extremely high on the order of thousands of psi and that can actually burst the the bond between the laminations and obviously that's what it's done right here. Um, so how much of a problem is it? Well it's a problem obviously. Um, I suppose there's no reason we couldn't just rebond this stuff. Um, I'm not going to use this. It, it's the thicker material anyway, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this out of the 0 .016 or the 16 thousandths thick stuff. And I'm going to take a chance that that will work okay because that material is so thin that I do believe that the water jet itself spends so little time over any spot that it will be able to successfully cut it and not have this kind of damage. We'll find that out as we move along. Okay, this is the material I'm going to use. And as you can see, it's, it's really thin. It's very little to it. Okay, it is done. Total cut time was 4 minutes and 39 seconds. Unfortunately, it is rather badly delaminated. I mean, it does a really nice job on the uh, on the cut. It's a beautiful cut, and um, the object is just exactly the way it was intended. But it is in a couple of different places 
delaminate it. That's definitely not what we want. So we'll have to we'll have to uh, discuss this and decide how we want to deal with it. As you can see in the film, we're pretty happy with the water jet, but we're disappointed that it can't cut laminated fiberglass panels. Too bad. We're RC plane hobbyists, and that's an important material due to its high strength and light weight. In this case, we decided there was no harm in re-laminating the flap reinforcements you saw us cut. If it was a more critical piece, uh, then we might would probably think twice about that. I don't know, but I suspect the same problem would occur with carbon fiber panels. I'll test that sometime. Water jet should be good for carbon fiber because it eliminates the dust and smell problem that makes working with carbon fiber difficult. I guess we'll find out. Well, I hope you found this video informative. I'll see you next time.